so I've had to make a little cut there uh, I finished off the tutorial with uh, the Visual Studio code screen on top uh, so I was up to stripping textures and internal textures uh, but also we have uh, if I just the imposter and update imposter buttons which are quite important as well so strip internal textures and strip textures strip textures is quite self-explanatory it will zap actually we'll do it somewhere that's actually textured because I've already done that bit from there that should be enough to cause some mischief strip textures and there we go whatever was in the selection area now be very careful because should you not have a selection area then boom they all go every single one of them <laughs> so just be wary of that because if you've been making a lot of changes to a prefab and you click that by mistake and the undo button decides not to work You know, do you save your changes and repaint the prefab or do you just bite the bullet and redo the changes? Again, you need to, you, you tend to only make big mistakes like that once and you get into the habit of sorting yourself out. But uh, internal textures is pretty much the same except internal textures, if these blocks are painted on all sides except the back. So then we've got the steel paint and paint on there. If I select that area and I press internal textures, strip internal textures, where they've gone, you can see the blocks on the outside are still painted, but the blocks on the inside, the ones that you wouldn't see anyway, have nothing. Uh, and I'm guessing over, could you imagine a prefab this size? I know I'm quite guilty. I showed you earlier on how you can just paint a block on all sides. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, now you can just take all those internal textures out but i mean it's it i kind of think of a situation where you wouldn't when you were finished doing a prefab in such a way that you couldn't just press the strip internal textures button and just have all of the the ones that you aren't going to see anyway i don't think there would be anything classed as internal i suppose maybe if you have things like this against the wall it might class that as an internal texture where the, the, the side touches that or like a table something like that I don't know it's, it's just something to be aware of so the big one update imposter so Gaz uh, actually replied to a forum thread and I never in all the time I've messed with this actually realised that that's what that button does uh, if I go to sh will it work on this Right, okay. So basically, you press the update and post up button. It'll ask you if you want to save changes. Now, this is slightly better than the way that I showed you in the tutorial video that I've done not too long ago because it's prompting you to save your prefab before uh, you do anything. Whereas in my guide, at the end, the last thing I do is clear the uh, prefab, clear to delete the prefab basically because you can't get rid of that big black shape and then I reload it. Now if you accidentally click save you've got a nice lovely mesh file but you don't have a fucking prefab anymore because it's, it's you've cleared it. So at least this way it's going to ask you do you want to save and we're going to say no of course. But then it's going to create the mesh file for you and are we still in simple mode? Ah, it's because I've got show imposter on. So normally it would flash into that and then it would flash back normally, reload the prefab for you. And then from then on, once we've got a base mesh file to work with, we can use show imposter to view it. Now, we can't do anything, I don't think, with this. Can I get a selection box? We can. Oh. Now, can I make it bigger and can I actually change something? Because as demonstrated in my last video, there's quite clearly a, a need sometimes to uh, to modify these. 
what you see at a distance isn't what you see up close and sometimes a little bit of work goes a long way when you see that little yellow bus on the horizon of the highway so if I press J to delete that so we don't seem to be able to edit this so I suppose if there's a need to edit your prefab then you could s save it as something different so you've got a second copy then make the edits to the prefab and then press the update imposter button and take a mesh of the edited prefab which you could rename the same as the original or you could do it with the commands simplify the prefab and then do all the edits in simple form and then the combine the export and what have you uh, I want to guess 99% of people are just going to love they can just click a button and have a mesh file and that is the most important thing initially uh, not many people will make prefabs that need proper tweaks but as an example I mean from a distance even that stairwell looks shit you know does it even need to be there by the time it's outside and we draw distance am I even going to care whether I can see those stairs or not by the time I get close enough for it to matter I'll be drawing them in detail anyway so I don't know different people with different settings may experience different things so again it's something you can mess around with uh, it's entirely up to you but we're really dragging on now uh, so the last menu is pretty self-explanatory we can search through with different prefab groups or we can search them all and search for individual prefabs uh, load the prefab prefab properties without loading the prefab up so I can click on this prefab go to properties and see what groups it's in I suppose I can categorize prefabs as I've, if I was to say add the combo pack and I wanted it in its own little group just for combo pack you know, I can always uh, do that on the fly. I uh, can't really think of another use for that. Clean prefabs doesn't do nothing. It keeps popping up in the console. The requested feature is not implemented. So we'll just ignore that. But load into and place prefab are one and the same thing. If I just load up a new prefab. I'm going to take fucking imposter mode off. We'll take sleeper volumes off. So you cannot use load into until you have a selection. As soon as you've got a selection, load into lights up. We choose the prefab we want to load into. So we take the wussy bit of highway and we load in a real bit of highway. Now it's not there yet. And see, actually, I want this to join up properly you know, we're just touching oh it's still a little bit too high I think that's it bingo oh, but we've overlapped oh, wrong way. and when you're happy with the placement place prefab And there you go. If I made a mistake, and actually it was supposed to go there, I can just move it. Now, bearing in mind, I can unselect that. I can clear my selection area. Well, maybe I can it. Is it still treating it as a separate prefab? I think it actually might be. But anyway, the point was, is if you need to move it, you can. And this works especially well in the world editor, where you can just slide prefabs around the streets, and <laughs> it's pretty awesome. But yeah, that's a, just a little bit of a difference. But that is, other than the create a new prefab button, I wonder what that does. Uh, F3 brings up your little debug stuff. Uh, if you press K to bring up a menu so you get your cursor, you can add all sorts of details. Again, this is something I use more on the world editor. Uh, 
but I don't know you might want to know what your focus block is or what your texture is or something like that and that's where you would find that out but that's it that's prefab editing done and hopefully <laughs> what hasn't been the uh, agonizingly painful 40 minutes or so uh, I intend to do a, uh, an in-depth video on how to make some serious edits through the world editor uh, I've been playing around editing terrain files and all the other little funky JPEG pictures and PNGs that come with the world folder now when you make one and there's some really cool stuff to show you on there uh, but it's all dead simple to use I think there's just a little bit of a misunderstanding on what things like the mystical save button in the world editor does I know I know but we'll save that for next time uh, thank you very much for watching I hope this video has been uh, extremely useful if there's anything you would like explained or if there's a particular scenario or example I could better explain then uh, I'm a much bigger fan of doing short and quite concise videos as opposed to a big drone through like this but you know at some point in this video I've talked about every single button I believe except invite friends and options but I mean come on we're, we're prefab editors in this channel we don't have friends we just build but anyway until next time this is me signing out uh, thank you for watching